Nate, how you doing, man? Did you guys get any snow in the Rock or in uh, in Saline? We got plenty of it up here in Fayetteville. Very little here, Phil. Um, today, a little bit of flurry action, but not much. And you know, I I, I grew up in the Midwest. I didn't like the snow uh, really at all. You know, I became an adult and I was glad to be in Arkansas and not have snow. But I'm telling you, 2020 quarantine and everything. I'm kind of ready for a little bit. I'm ready for a snow day and let my kids go out and have a good time. Uh, I've changed my tune a little bit on, I guess 2020 has kind of done that to a lot of us, but uh, I hope we get some, I hope we get some, maybe probably not for Christmas, but uh, hopefully it'll come this winter sometime. We'll get a nice snow. We can, Sled. I saw everybody sledding up there at Razorback Stadium. That looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday on the show. What do you do on a snow day? And my favorite things were were to uh, go sledding or to play. I mean, a an all out hit them hard, slobber knocker, blood on the snow tackle football game with your friends. And I'm guessing you probably played a couple of those in Iowa. We did. My brother and I were we lived out on the country, so it was he and I, three years younger played a lot of football and uh we had some tractors out there and uh they would make big big piles we climb up there and jump off of them and when, when i was at school one time i was like in elementary school standing there waiting for the school bus a young kid second third grade and then older kids were having a snowball fight one of the a big jagged ball hit me right in the face and you talk about blood blood everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I was, such friends know, here i'm laughing at this idea standard. I'm an innocent bison. I'm sitting there and I'm crying. Teachers are running over. They're getting on the older kids. They got in trouble, you know, for because we're all standing there waiting for the bus. You're not supposed to have a snowball fight there, but they did. And so, but that's the only time I had a lot of snowball fights. That's the only time I got in. So. One of the bit, one of the times I got in more trouble than I ever got in my entire life was when I made a snowball and I threw it at a public bus. Oh, oh yeah, oh. from my school bus stop too. I think I was the age of I don't know eight or nine. I, I was a little devious every once in a while. My parents, yeah. boy, I don't think I was allowed to watch Saturday morning cartoons for like three weeks. Yeah, I bet Mr. Olsen wasn't too happy about that. But, uh, nah, you know, snowballs, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it's like, you know, playing ball in the house. You do that no matter how many times your folks say not to. And it's hard not to throw snowballs at cars, other buildings, and windows and everything. And that's one of the hazards of, of living somewhere where there's a lot of snow, you, there's, there's a lot of snowballs thrown, and sometimes they hit things they shouldn't. But it, that's that, that's a great memory of being a kid and and in the Midwest. And that my kids haven't really seen that as much. So hopefully, hopefully we get a little snow down here. But I, yeah, I'm a little jealous of you guys up there. I'm, I am. Last thing I'll touch on about the snow thing: you 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 realize the whole use for younger siblings is to throw snowballs at them. Uh, all right, so let's get into this high school football stuff from last weekend, and it's just the same story for Pulaski Academy. Play a season, <clears throat> win a championship, though they got some revenge against Little Rock Catholic this past Saturday, didn't they? And big revenge, too. I mean, a big blowout. Little Rock Christian, yeah, they they did. Uh, it, was, it, it was a remarkable game because they got four onside kicks. Um, they're... They're like, and, and you know, that's their mo. Kevin Kelly, he's a he's an unconventional coach. Uh, onside kick every time, no punt, and that wasn't a fact in this game. They never did have to go for it deep in their own territory, which they will do that. They didn't have to this time. They pretty much own this game. So four four onside kicks was the story of it. Still, um, they they were able to get those and cash in. Uh, the first one they got. They fumbled um, on a long pass. The guy was running and fumbled the ball. But the other times they cashed in on him, and, and Little Rock Christian was out of the game by halftime. Uh, so, so great, great game by PA. Great season. They go undefeated, uh, win a championship, and uh, that's six out of the last se- six out of the last seven years for them. So, uh, a really, a really great dynasty that's been built by Kevin Kelly. I think he's won nine this career. So. I don't know. I think some people thought that game could be a little closer, but when when, when they get one onside kick, I think they've got like a ninety percent winning percentage. If they get two or more, they're undefeated. So you can't you can't give the ball away four times. And Budish and Kawa, he's a five ten, one hundred fifty five pound linebacker. He leads, I think, leads the state in tackles, or he's close. 
great, great linebacker. He's a two-time wrestler, state championship wrestler, undersized guy. He got two of them, and so they're they're just so good at that. And that was that was the story of the ball game. It was it was over by halftime. And last thing I want to touch on about PA, and it seems like it's such a it's it's a topic that gets touched on every year this time of the year about you know will Kevin Kelly ever try to take a a college coaching job, you know, and I mean, he is one of the more well-known high school coaches in the country, not just in the state for the kind of success he's had. And also for just thinking differently than most coaches and the way that he has his team play. And, you know, I, I know, I only know him a little bit. I've talked to him in person a few times, had him on a previous radio show. Right. I think, I think he's a high school coach. I don't think he's going to go to college. I think if he would have had the opportunity, he might've done that by now. I, I, I don't. Do you think he'll, he'll, that he'll stay at Pulaski Academy for the rest of his career because he's still a fairly young guy? Yeah, you're right. I think he's barely fifty. Um, well, I don't know. I I go back and forth on. It. I think that that Kevin, you know, he he has achieved almost as much as you can at the high school level. I mean, he hasn't won at a you know at a big school, but you, look what he's done at Pulaski Academy. You know, he, he went down to Highland Park, Texas. They snapped an 88-game winning streak down there. I mean, they have some impressive wins out of the state. And I think their strength of schedule, I mean, some people, when you know, they won this championship, people are, well, they need to move up and 6 8, 7, 8. They would be competitive with a lot of bigger schools, and they show that every year when they go and they beat some schools outside the state. They play tough level competition, high-level competition. Played the, the – uh, private school out of Virginia that had like 17 Division One commits on their team and beat them. So I uh, went over to Nashville and beat a prominent private school over there, Ravenwood. So he's done a lot at the high school level. I, I personally would like to see him get a shot like Gus Malzahn did. Be an offensive coordinator at a Power 5 school. Um, I, I think that Kevin is more than capable of that. I mean, if, if, you, if you talk to Kevin, Kevin is a guy, he's He's not just a high school football coach. He is super smart. Uh, he could have been an accountant. That's what he, I think, went to school for. So he, he relates well to lots of different people, business-wise and things. But he, he, he's not your typical high school coach. And so I, I think he could go to that level if somebody would give him a chance. But I think the way that he would get into college football is if somebody hired him as a, you know, either a, you know, some kind of a consultant an offensive coordinator, a quarterback's coach, maybe, maybe even a special teams coach, although you wouldn't be able to do onside kicks all the time. But, yeah, I, I definitely think that he could be a good college coach. He could be a D1 coach. Uh, he could go to a D2 school right now and be a head coach, I believe, for sure. And uh, I think somebody will, will take a chance on him. You know, I, I think they will. And I don't know what kind of offers he's had. And I, I think that – he would like to do that, um, and and uh, hopefully, if he does want to do that, he'll get a chance to do that. But at Classy Academy, he is dynamite, and he is known nationally for what he's done, and it's been a winning recipe there uh, to to where he's guarded. You know, you know, Bill Belichick called him the best high school coach in the country. So that's you know, I don't think he just throws those kind of words around. So that that speaks real highly of Kevin. And if you're one of the best in the country in high school. That might, you know, bode well for you maybe being a, a college coach as well. Nate Olson here with us on Halftime. Nate, we got two more state champions to crown this Saturday. Uh, let's get, get off first in the 3A. You got Harding Academy coming out of White County and Searcy taking on McGee. That's going to be the 6 o'clock game, the nightcap on uh, Championship Saturday down at Wolf Memorial Stadium. What What do you think about Harding Academy versus McGee in the 3A? Well, I think Harding Academy probably is a pretty heavy favorite in that. Uh, you know, they – they are back. Or they are defending champs. Um, Sipes, their quarterback, is very good. Uh, they they've just got a lot going for them right now with momentum. They lost one time to Memphis uh, Briarcrest, uh, I believe it was uh, over there. You know, private school in Memphis uh, got them pretty good, but otherwise, uh, haven't been in a lot of close games. And McGee will pose some problems to them, maybe with some of their athleticism. Uh, but I think Harding Academy is really good up front. They're deep. And Sipes, when you have a quarterback like that, um, he's a college level prospect, probably a Division two guy. Um, he that that helps you a ton. So I, I would think they'd be a favorite to win. Uh, maybe McGee can make it close. I mean, they're going to be an underdog, and that's obviously what their coach would probably 
talking to him about is uh, playing that role and trying to, you know, have some incentive to come up here and beat them. But, but yeah, I, I, I think it could be a close game, but I think Hardy Academy wins it. And then over in the 4A, 4A, you got Shiloh Christian taking on Rivercrest. Rivercrest beat Warren 55-35 last Friday night, and now they take on Shiloh Christian. And Shiloh kind of beat the team that I was a sentimental favorite for being Stuttgart, and they just, they dismantled Stuttgart 56-7. to Seems to me just kind of when you look pen to paper, I think this is Shiloh's state championship to lose here. Or is it is it that simple, or do you think Rivercrest has a good opportunity here? Well, I I think I would I would make Shiloh favorite in this game. Uh, one of the X factors is going to be Cam Turner. Cam Turner is a very talented, uh, I say two way player, but actually three ways. I I don't know if he ever leaves the field for them. He he returns kicks. He's a quarterback. Uh, he's at ninety three tackles. I think at linebacker safety. Plays everywhere, but last week he hurt his ankle, and they, they were down by one in the third quarter. Came back, and they inserted uh, the backup in, uh, Kishan Scott. He did a good job for them. He hasn't thrown a pass all year, but he ran 17 times uh, for a couple of touchdowns and caught a couple too, and so he was enough to to get them to the win. They, they rattled off 20 points late in the game to win, but if Turner doesn't play or he's hobbled, I don't think they have much of a chance they need Turner in the game they need Turner to play as well as he's played all year I think he has to have you know an unbelievable game an MVP type performance again for them to win and the other guys around he does have talent around him you just mentioned Scott who's a running back receiver he's got some help but he's what makes him go so if he's hobbled if he can't play um, that will not that won't be good for them but I, I haven't heard his status on him I think he's uh, probable to play though so uh, you know hopefully for them he does but Shiloh you can't say enough about what they've done defensively they they're like I, I was talking to Jeff Conway and I told him you guys are kind of like Plasky Academy everybody talks about the Shiloh offense with Gus Malzahn and Rhett Lashley and you know Josh Floyd and all the great offensive players that come through there and the coaches but defense is what's getting it done in the playoffs and they're actually doing it on all facets I mean they got blocked two punts last week uh, one for a touchdown but I, I really like them defensively. When you when you uh, have Stuttgart based, you know they shut them out the entire game except for the end. And their their uh, first team defense has only given up a couple touchdowns in the playoffs. They they're really playing good, and they only have ten seniors on their team. They graduated twenty four, so they've done a nice job of of taking a lot of guys, young guys, including the quarterback sophomore Eli Wisdom, who's passed for over two thousand and rushed for over thirteen hundred. They've got those guys that step up, and they've done a good job. So Shiloh is really rolling. I, I, I think I, I agree with you. I think they're a favorite in this game, and maybe Turner can make it interesting, but I, I think they win it. Nate, we got to run. <clears throat> Let's do this again on Tuesday next week, and we'll wrap up with final we'll thoughts in the high school we'll, season. Thank you. Will do. Look forward Thanks, to it. Nate. Thank you. You got it. All right.